Hi everyone and welcome to my watercolor channel. I'm Laurel Hart and I'm glad that you've taken time to join me today for another watercolor lesson. Um, since we're almost in the middle of December and almost to the end of this unbelievable year 2020, I wanted to paint something symbolizing some hope and cheer. So I've decided to paint a Christmas wreath. About a week ago, my husband showed up with a beautiful live wreath that was a gift from someone at his office. It smelled so good, and I really wanted to hang it inside where I could inhale the fragrance. But before I hung it on my front door for Christmas, I got this really goofy artist's idea. I decided to take my Christmas wreath on a photo shoot to find an artsy setting to hang it in. I could hear the wreath saying, oh, please just hang me on your nice front white door where there's a roof over my head and I'm out of the elements. But I reasoned with my new little friend, no, I have some other plans for you for a little bit. So I went out with the wreath in hand and a nail in hand on a really cold day to find some fun places to hang it that were not beautiful necessarily or sheltering in any way. What I found was a rough old shed that had some perfect old doors on it in my brother's backyard. I pounded a nail in and hung the wreath on the scratchy wood. Suddenly, all the beautiful organic greenery stood out in sharp contrast to the weathered and faded old boards. It was the perfect background to set off the wreath's colorful berries and bright red bow. I snapped a bunch of photos, and even though it's kind of a cliche setting, I love what I ended up with, and that's what I'm going to be painting today. The wreath being put in an unnatural setting made me think of how this year has been for all of us. We've all been put in an uncomfortable place where we've felt vulnerable and out of place. But through this year, it has somehow brought out the best in people, and their kindness and caring has shown even all the more. The charitable colors of people have shown brighter, against what has been a drab background this year. The brother whose shed doors I borrowed to hang my wreath on is battling stage four cancer this year, part of our 2020 heartache. The irony is that he's the youngest of all my siblings. He's the most fun and the most hilarious of us all. Though he's been put in a very unsettling place, I've watched as he and his family have made the best of it. And as a group of siblings, we've been more aware of the time that we have together and have tried to make the most of every minute we have. This year has reminded me of the Dickens quote um, that I think could have been written for 2020 from um, his book, Tell of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. And I think that describes what we've been through this year, all of us. I want to talk just a little bit about wreaths. They have a lot of symbolism in them. Before becoming a Christmas tradition, they symbolized victory and power in Greece and Rome. The wreath was an ornament for the bride at her nuptials guests for a feast, and for victorious athletes and heroes who were returning from battle. Germany is really credited with starting the Christmas tree tradition in the 16th century, out of which the wreath tradition came. The people would try to make their trees a little more uniform in shape by cutting off some of the boughs, which were then saved and gathered up and woven into wreaths. Living in a time when things were scarce, the people used everything until it was gone. Even in that gesture, the wreath was born out of saving and rescuing. The green reused from evergreen trees, which, unlike other living things, could survive the harshness of winter and remain green all year round. That became a symbol of resilience, triumph, power, and hope. And lastly, the circular shape having no end or no beginning, made the wreath a representation of eternal life. Despite its widespread popularity and opulent representations in decorations of today, the wreath started with humble beginnings, created by people whose hard lives 
made them resilient and appreciative. Despite what has happened to all of us this year, I hope in some sense it has made us more appreciative of the things that we do have in our lives and has hopefully made us more resilient and able to overcome obstacles that we've faced. So I'm going to get to painting and I'm going to start. I have my uh, drawing on my paper. I'm working on a 140 pound um, cold press uh, Windsor Newton paper. And uh, I'll be using pigments that are um, all professional grade. Um, it will show you on the video what the colors are, so I won't take time to go through all of those. And then my brushes are primarily my Low Cornell 7020 series um, from a 6 up to a 14. Um, I know that these are, I think, not being made anymore, but uh, there are many substitutes that are um, acceptable and that you can find. Um, and then I've got a couple of uh, mops here that I'll be using as well for some of the loose wash part. Um, this lesson is actually going to be about um, using dry brush to help depict texture in a, a watercolor. And um, that part is going to actually come at the end of the painting. So um, I'll just get started on, in doing what I, the way I normally start. I'm going to uh, begin with a, a triad wash. Probably want a bigger brush than that. I think I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to use my uh, 12. And I'm just going to start out with my usual um, combination of alizarin crimson and um, my blue is manganese blue. And then um, I will add, I'm going to use um, oak, yellow ochre which is a little bit more of a, mm, not so bright of a yellow. And then when I start this wash, a lot of you have asked if I'm thinking consciously of where I'm putting these colors. I'm really not necessarily doing that in the first wash. What I'm trying to do is basically just tone the paper with a, a wash of a value in a, between a three and a five. So I just kind of begin willy-nilly here with um, combinations of this color or value more to, is more the accurate way to put it. And I'm just trying to cover the page. Right in through here, I'm going to be in the light, so I am going to keep it a little bit lighter there. And I'm jumping over some little places here where I've got a, a little ledge of light on that board. I'm going to let my wash end there, but I'll pick up that bead of water so I don't get a backwash up into there. So you can see that that's just not really a color. It's just a blend of these, um, of these three pigments. And I'm kind of trying to keep that one um, a little bit light there because it's going to be in the sun as well. So 
So what this is doing besides um, covering the paper is it, it gets you loosened up. It gets you, um, I don't know, it, it really gets you excited about the subject that you're painting. And, um, and covers that scary white paper, which we're all so afraid of. And again, here I'll pick up that bead. It's nice to have um, natural ending places where you can um, end your wash. Okay, so I need to pick up some more of that blue. But by using these three pigments, you can see um, you can see how all of the colors um, of the color wheel become evident. You've got purple and green and um, the whole gamut by just using these three these three um, primary colors, and then you get a a nice um, a nice unity when you do restrict how many different pigments you're using. I'm again, even though this isn't directly in the light, I'm going to leave that little white band there. And You also get some really pretty grays that um, that are really lovely. And even though these are, um, hmm, I was going to say I'm going to cover those, but you know what? I think I'll leave these and just um, come back with dry brush at the end because those are areas that are in the direct light. Um, so I'm going to leave them for now. I may come back and put a light wash over them. Um, now I'm going to go back into my um, wreath and start in putting in the um, really bright, bright colors of the foliage. This is a green gold that I'm using that is a color I've recently discovered. And I don't want to cover up all the whites in here. I want to um, leave that representation of the the light falling on the wreath. And already I have made one goof. I want to um, I wanted to get my um, 
berry color in there. So even while I've got this wet, um, wet color going on, I want to get my pine cone in there and um, let it bleed a little bit into the into the rest of the wreath, but not that much. Okay. Another pine cone down in here. That's my burnt umber, and I don't use that very much, but yeah, it kind of looks good for a pine cone, I think. And I'll get some more of the berries in right, right around there and let that um, bleed back into the green a little bit. And also over in here. I really want to punch that, so I'm using very um, undiluted pigment there. Again, I'm just jumping over a little bit of that um, greenery that's in the sun there, and a little bit over in here, so that you do get the feel that that's in light. And I know this doesn't look like a real natural green yet for um, for pine boughs, but I'm going to come back over this with some other some other green and it will look uh, at least a little more real. Okay, we've got another pine cone right in here. Maybe soften just a little bit of those edges. A little bit of light right back in there that I want to keep keep on the wreath too. This one's going to be in shadow, so I'll cover it all with with the, the green pigment. 
Okay, and back into here also. Another really nice little clump of berries right in here. Okay, and then I'm um, just going to finish Again, we've got more of that um, greenery that's in the sun there. Okay, so that's kind of the underlying uh, green for the wreath. And while I'm, while I have this red here, I'll go ahead and put in the bow. I'm going to try to leave a little um, edge to indicate that that ribbon's got a, a little, either a gold or silver border there. Come back there, little guy. Okay, and while that's still wet or drying, there's going to be some of that it, that's in shade, shadow. Mm. So I've mixed a little bit of blue in with the in with the alizarin to make that into more of a purple. I think I'm coming into this a little too early. Kind of in my hurry here. So that just gives the um, that bright red a little more dimension, having some giving it a little more depth. Okay, then um, maybe just a little bit more of this greenery up in here. It looks like that's maybe a leaf. I don't want quite that much white there. I don't think. Okay, now I'm going to come back and add in some deeper greens to um, put in some of the shadow areas while that is drying still. But it's still damp enough, I think, to um, come in with some deeper greens. And I'm going to come in with ultramarine blue and um, I think some transparent oxide red. 
yeah, that's going to give me a nice um, pine bough green, I think. Working its way around my pine cone. Okay, and I think I want that more green. So let's see. I think the only green I've got on here is sap green. But I'm going to add a little bit of um, phthalo blue to that and make that really a nice... A nice deep green. So I'm just I'm just working around it now to um, give some shadow areas, and over in here it's mostly shadow. So I'm gonna cover most everything in there. Maybe leave some little branches. Um, by um, negative painting around them. There's a little spot here where I missed maybe some more berries. Right in there. See, as I leave just some a little bit of that um, other green poking through, you, you get that feel of just the light catching a little bit of the greenery just here and there, though. And back behind the wreath here is, or the bow here, is definitely going to be darker because that's in shadow all the way back there. And 
and I just nicked that with the color that I didn't want there. Okay, I want to come in now with um, some other shadow tones now, and I want to I want to probably a nice purple back in there. So I've got this. Um, where I want to touch back into the wet space there and just add in add in some really clear color where that's in shadow back there. And then you just get kind of a a nice flow between the wreath and the shadow. However, I'm going to darken just a little bit under there where the The wreath ends and the shadow begins. Okay, I like that. And I think I'll come in here to get the potent dark into my um, center of my wreath too. And that's got to be darker as well. It's really dark back in there. So my, this phase of the painting here is um, what I call the, the second wash, where I'm coming in with um, a blue that can have the power to go down to a value 10. I've got ultramarine blue. And then still, um, alizarin crimson is still able to give me the, the color that I want, or the, the uh, value power that I want coming down through there. But where that's in the sun there, I want to keep that just a little lighter and warmer.
again, these shadows are just the same mixture of that um, triad again. Sometimes I'm adding in the transparent oxide red as the red in the triad. And I think that needs to be a little, a little bit stronger in that shadow area. I'm going to come back over that. I'm going to see if this is um, dried enough to put in the no, that's still too wet. I want to just put in some of the some of the cracks in the wood. I'm switching over to a um, little bit smaller brush. <clears throat> I'm already starting to use a little bit of dry brush here and and all that is is where you let the paint um, get very dry on the brush which is where it gets that name from and um, let it let it um, leave some areas of the paper showing between the stroke if that makes sense here's kind of another well, oh, that was not a good example at all. <laughs> You're supposed to see some streakiness and that didn't that didn't demonstrate what I was trying to show you at all. Okay. Put a little bit more warmth in there. Okay, and um, now working up in here a little bit, I've got There's a dark area behind that board. You can see there. And then this 
was also a darker shadow coming back behind there. Having trouble getting my stuff as dark as I want it. Okay. It's probably got to be a little bit more evened out there. Okay. Then. I'm going to pull some of that down into the into the um, bottom there where you start to see some detail of the boards. This guy needs a little bit of dry brushing. I'll try to try to demonstrate that a little better. It's um, it's good to have a little piece of scrap paper where you can um, try to get your brush dry enough. And that's probably about where it should be now. So you're not filling in the whole, the whole area with color. You're just adding that really nice texture on it. And same thing down here. This is this has got um, some really sunny spots in it there, so I don't want to I don't want to cover that all up. And sometimes it's a nice variation to take, to wipe out the, the um, shadows, lines of the boards, where you're in a dark shadow area. Just wipe those out with a really pointed brush. And then you can blot them also to, um, to make them show up even better. I'm afraid if I blot it right now, it's going to pull too much color out. Okay, so um, same thing over here. I'm going to going to try to pull pull some of the color out to indicate that um, slat behind there. And then down below here, I'll actually paint it in, in um, positive space, I guess you'd call it. I really should dry my, my paper here before I go on, I think. And I'm still thinking this is a little wanting to be a little bit darker here. And right under that board here that's probably coming out over there should have a shadow.
So now what I'm doing kind of is just defining and making these boards um, stand out just a little bit. And um, now I'm feeling like the wreath is still a little too light, especially down in that really deep well, or whatever you'd call it, in between the... um, in the back of the wreath, whatever that would be called. Yes, that's much better. That really strengthened that area. And I'm doing a little bit of dry brush on here, too, to give that a little more texture. I think this just needs some real good punches of dark in it and places here. But that's helping to set um, set things forward. And under here as well. There's some kind of a little thing that's nailed into the board there that is casting kind of a nice little shadow. And on this, uh, there's a log leaning up against there that I need to get in. to give it out a little bit of detail. And I'm not sure I understand why the shadow there is going this other way. But I'm going to put it in as it is.
Okay. Still, this is too weak over here. I need to. Strength at that some more. Yeah, that's helping to to really pull in that shadow there. How many times have I said, don't go back in when you have a nice wash? And how many times do I not obey my own rules? Okay, I did disobey my rules, but I'm happy with what I did. <laughs> so that's good. I can still see that there are some um, deep shadow areas in here that need to come in on the wreath. And then um, this will be pretty close to being done. And on this wood, I've just tried to vary more or less the temperature um, so it, it's got warm and cool in it for variety. You can see the warms against the cools and it, it just gives a very nice um, contrast.
All right, so I'm still feeling like this area now is a little bit weak compared to the other shadows. And I've maybe taken some of the pleasing part of the color out, but I it, the value honestly is more important than the color. Um, so I, let me get these shadow areas in in the wreath, and then I think I think that will make a big difference. To soften that up just a little in places. And then down in here too, underneath that pine cone. I've got a pretty good shadow going through there. And sometimes if I feel I've left too much white, I sometimes just blur stuff a little bit with, with plain water and it helps. Okay, then and then down in here is another area that should be in shadow. pretty well. There's not going to be any sun really shining on that area. And same up over in here behind the bow. should all be a little bit darker there. I feel like my pine cone got a little lost there. Try to come. 
kind of bring him back a little bit. Same up in here with this one. I'll do a little bit of, um, now that that bow is completely dried, we can go back in and get some of these darks in that will help it make a little more sense. Still just a little darker under here, where that's really deep in shadow. And I feel like I've lost a little bit of the umph on that red. On the bow there. That's too wet. I'll have to come back to do that. I feel like I need a little bit more um, of some gray, uh, some darks in here. And I've got to get probably finishing up here or I'm going to overwork this thing, <laughs> which is um, easy to do.
because you sometimes just want to keep playing in it. Okay, some of my berries are a little bit lost here too. So I could re-strengthen them. All right, um, the last thing I'm going to do then is what this lesson is supposed to be about, and that is the dry brush. So I'm going to go to my number eight, and I want to do, I want to just pick up kind of a um, multicolor purpley. and put a little bit on these boards here. I think I've got it a little bit too wet, but That's okay, you can sort of see the idea of what that does and making it look like wood. So you get the brush on, uh, using it on its side, like so. and get the bulk of it off here. Off your brush first. And then right where that, um, these boards are in sunlight, they need some light texture on them. It's really easy to overdo this because it's fun and anyway. Put a little bit right up in on this board here. And coming down here. A little bit more down this guy too. Okay, I think I'm about there. Just a little bit back there. And then maybe um, 
maybe I will just strengthen these um, cracks a little bit through here. I think they could show up a little better. Yeah, that helps. You can also do dry brush this way, but it's not as convincing. I was doing it that other way. I think I am ready to quit here. Maybe. I didn't leave myself as much of a light side as I wanted over here um, on my wreath on the left side there. So I may go back in there and um, lighten that up somewhat. But probably right not, not right now. I'm only going to put a little bit more of the dry brush there. And a little bit darker here. So if I were to go back on this, I think I might um, pull out a little bit of lights on that other side of the wreath. and. Um, try to bring back a few more highlights in there, but but I think it's okay as it is. For now, I'll close and. Um, I hope that that was a worthwhile lesson to you on uh, dry brush and how to create texture on surfaces with um, using using your brush in that um, in that kind of a technique. It's very helpful in um, depicting old weathered wood and uh, boats and that sort of thing. Anyway, um, I just want to close with. Um, Hoping that your Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate this year will be filled with love and joy and hope despite the hardships of this year. And that even those who may have lost loved ones um, throughout the year 
you might have hope that like the Christmas wreath, life goes on without end. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time on another watercolor segment. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh well. Did I say the part about how the wreath didn't have an end? Okay. Okay, that last part I'm going to do at the end. Oh, okay. Okay, so can we leave that on? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll come back to that. Okay, what is that stupid blue? Yeah, the blue. Um, my blue is. Uh, I should have printed the colors for you. Brain freeze. <laughs> What's that stupid blue? It's um, it's aqua. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's um. Oh, it's right on my tongue. <laughs> okay. So we don't. We're wasting a lot of time. I know we are, but um, it's manganese blue. Okay, manganese so blue. Okay. And